Very good morning to everyone. It's really nice to see you out this morning. Because we have few, I am tempted to greet each and every one individually, but it's not going to be possible and necessary this morning. So I just want to welcome us all to the New Testament Church of God in Calder. And as you know, our pastor, Pastor Carson Ferdinand, is our pastor and he is assisted by Minister Dinah C. Williams. I would consider the weather today has been good because we have been forecasting a lot of dry season. And I know God has been working in this place to keep us happy and green so that we can continue to grow. Amen. Let us stand this morning and give God some praise and glory this morning because He is the God of all nation and He is the God of all creation. He has given us the rain when it's supposed to be raining and He gives us the sun when it's supposed to be sunny. Let us give God some praise this morning. Praise God for the rain this morning. Hallelujah. God, we want to praise your name today. We want to magnify your name this morning, Jesus. We praise you. We magnify you, Lord. We glorify you, O oh God. Father, you are the Alpha and you are the Omega. And Lord, there is none that came before you and there is none to come after you, Lord. For we acknowledge that you are the great I am. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God, you are mighty. You are mighty. Mightier than anything that we have ever come into contact with. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. I want to recognize some people here this morning. First of all, I'd like to recognize Bishop Hansby Lewis. We are glad to have him in our midst. And a little while from now, you would know one of the functions why he is here. But one of the things I know why he is here is because he always loved to fellowship with us at Calder. Hallelujah. I also like to greet my brother and friend, Ulrich Vons. Ulrich has been my friend for so long, maybe over 40 years, and when I see him coming there this morning, I felt real good. I said to myself, you know, at least one person is showing the goodness of God today. Hallelujah. Let us not be daunted by the weather conditions. It might be a little cold, but let us give God the praise and glory, and let us open up our minds, our hearts today to receive from God as we invite Adrian, our president, today's Men's um, Life Builder Sunday and therefore I invite Brother Adrian Haynes to do our opening prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is His name. There is no other name but the name of Jesus which can break every chain in our lives. Oh. So we want to give him thanks and praise as we welcome him in, in our midst today. Let us lift up his holy name, for there's power in that name. So let's give him all the thanks, all the praise, and honor which is due unto his matchless name. Father, for you are worthy of such. You are holy and righteous, O oh God. You are faithful God. You are an awesome God and we magnify your name. We exalt you, O oh God, and we lift up that name which is above all other name, O oh God. So we thank you and we praise you. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the new mercy that you have renewed unto us, O oh God, for today we'll never see this day again. So we come to the privilege to come into your presence and to give you thanks and to praise you. And to give you all glory and honor, which is due unto your most blessed name, O oh God. For you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be lifted up. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, God, you will never change. You are unshakable. You are unstoppable. You are unmovable, O oh God. 
So, Father, as we humble ourselves before you, in no other name but in the name of Jesus. Help us to be in one accord this day, O oh God, while we magnify and we praise your name, while we worship you, O oh God. For we know what happened on that Pentecost Sunday when all of the, the apostles was in one accord and words are done with powers from on high. So, Father, we ask for the same this day so that we can blend our, fo our voice together, sing like never before, to worship you and to magnify your name. For you deserve it all, Father. For you have made it possible for we to come into your presence. By the sacrifice of your Son on the cross, we cannot, you make it so that we don't have to go to men to come to you on our behalf. Because of your sacrifice, we can come boldly to the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy and forgiveness of our sins. Forgive us of our sins, O oh God. Creating us the right spirit and renewing us the right heart, O oh God. A heart of worship, O oh God. A heart of thankfulness. A grateful heart, O oh God, for what you have done for us. All that you are doing and what you will continue to do for us, O oh God. Father, I bring the congregation before you in a mighty special way. Father, you know everyone, Father. You know their heart. For you sought your heart, O oh God. So, Father, whatever their needs are, Father, I pray that you will meet their needs and break every chain that abounds in their life. Uh. Whatever the spiritual, financial, what sickness, whatever the chain is, O oh God, break them in the mighty name of Jesus. As I cover them in the precious blood of Jesus, O oh God. As we blend our voice to worship you and to pull on the stronghold of the enemy, O oh God. There is none like you and there is none to compare to you. For you are God all by yourself. Faithful and true and your judgment are true, O oh God. Father, I bring our pastor before you. Continue to bless him, O oh God. Continue to lift him on high, O oh God. Adorn him with power from on high. Increase his knowledge and wisdom and understanding in you, O oh God so that you can continue to lead us aright, Father. Pour a mighty blessing on his family, um, a fresh anointing, O oh God. Strengthen the inner man, O oh God, so that we will continue to walk in your way and not faint, Father. For you are our strength, O oh God. Father, for her, his able assistant, Diana C. Williams, O oh God. Father, you know how by name, O oh God. You know her way and her deeds, O oh God. And you know she loves to praise you and to worship you and to follow your ways, O oh God. Father, pour out a fresh anointing upon her today, O oh God. Continue to pour into her, O oh God, your will and your way. Knowledge and understanding, O oh God. Father, heal of her any sickness, O oh God. Guide her as she goes from day to day, O oh God. And I cover her in the precious blood of Jesus. Build a hedge around her, O oh God. And Father, also bring Minister Bacchus before you. Continue to lead him in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Father, lift up his hands, O oh God. Help, help him, O oh God, to understand that you are God and you never fail. Place him on higher grounds, O oh God, so that is your light will shine through him and men will see your good works, O oh God. And we will glorify you because we will say, that is the Son of God and he is working, O oh God. So Father, I bring the musician before you, O oh God. Thank you for them, O oh God. Increase the knowledge in music, O oh God. Touch your fingers, O oh God. And let us play skillfully like never before, because they are not playing unto men, O oh God, but unto you, for your glory and for your honor. And Father, lead them in the path of righteousness. Take them to higher heights, not where they want to go, Lord, but where you want them to go. Lead them. And may they follow, O oh God. And maybe they, and may they answer when you call. Father, 
Because there's no other way we can live by a life of submission and service unto your matchless name. For your way is right and just. So, Father, we thank you and we praise and we give you all an and glory. Father, as I bring the worship team before you, may the song that they choose, O oh God, touch someone today and lift up your name on high and bless your holy name, O oh God. And that someone could see through those songs, you're faithful and true. And you never fail. And you always on time. And that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Continue to bless us, O oh God, collectively and individually. And as I said, God, help us to be in one accord so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness. So as I bring the service before you, God, take fully control and let everything be done in decency and order to your honor and to your glory. We worship you and we magnify your name for you are God and God alone. And we have no other God but you, O God. We have no other helper but you. So help us to stay focused on your God and walk in the calling which we have been called. So thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to welcome those who have just joined us and also our brethren in, on YouTube that have been viewing us from time to time. And we thank you for joining us today. We thank you for being with us. We want to hope that you would find peace and solace with Christ today and that someone will get to know the Lord as their personal savior today. I would like to also bring greetings from Brother Cyrus. Last time I spoke with him, he's, he's willing to come to be with us but has been facing some different challenges. We just want to, us to continue to pray for him and also to pray for Brother Haynes um, we haven't seen Sister Haynes here, but I just want us to pray for Brother Haynes. They have been part of the men's fellowship, and they are still part of the men's fellowship. We just want to bear them up in our prayers. At this time, I call on Donnie to read the scripture reading this morning. Good morning, church. The scripture reading this morning will be taken from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 to 19. Hey, hey begin it. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in certain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. And verse 19 says, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may be whole on eternal life here end of the scripture reading praise the lord thank you donny praise the name of the lord let us get in the atmosphere of worship now because we are going to worship the king of kings and the lord of lords as we invite Brother Kwame, to lead us off in this song service this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good morning, church. God is good. All the time. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Praise God. We want to welcome God this morning in our midst. Because without him... You just cannot make it. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this chorus. Welcome, welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power and fill this temple. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power and fill this temple. Holy Ghost, we welcome, 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 welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost. Welcome you, come with power, fill this temple, Holy Ghost, we welcome you, welcome, 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 blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you, come with power, fill this temple. Holy Ghost, we welcome, 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 welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power and fill this temple. Holy Ghost, we welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power, fill this temple. Holy Ghost, we welcome, 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 welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power, fill this temple, Holy Ghost, we welcome you, welcome, 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 blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you, come with power, fill this temple, Holy Ghost, we welcome you Holy Ghost we welcome you Holy Ghost we welcome you Holy Ghost we welcome you hallelujah we welcome you in this place Lord because you are worthy and there's none like you, Lord. And there is none to take your place. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to sing our next song. Oh, I want to see him. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson floor, many arrows burst my soul from without within. But my Lord, lead me on to Him I must win. Oh, I want to see Him looked upon His face. Then to sing forever. Ever do we 
black may be the night, but I claim more close to him. He will give me light. Satan's name may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord. Goes ahead, lead wherever And though I want to see him, look upon his face. There to sin forever, our saving grace. On the street. mountain high and behold my Savior there leading in the fight with his standard hand outstretched towards that valley low God in me I can see as I onward go, I know I want to see him looked upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. Hallelujah! On the streets of glory. Let me live my voice. Here's a past, oh, at last, ever to rejoice. When before me bellows rise from the mighty deep, then my love bereft my back. That safely keep and he leads me gently on through this world below. He's a real friend to me, and oh, I love him so. On his face, on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cause I'll pass home at last, able to rejoice. When before me bellows rise from the mighty. The Lord direct my path, be that safely keep, and He leads me gently on to this world below. He's a real friend to me, and oh, I love Him so. see him look upon his face there to sin forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me live my voice is I'll pass Ever to oh, I want to see him 
Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to send forever. On the streets of glory, let me live my voice. Is that past? Oh, my class, ever do we just get that past? Get that past? Oh, my class, ever do we just Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, we worship you. Praise, Praise you, Lord. God. Hallelujah. Praise you. The fourth stanza is When before me bellows rise from the mighty deep, the Lord direct my back and he do safely keep. And he lead me gently on through this world below. He's a real friend to me. And oh, I love him so. Hallelujah. Praise God. We love you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I heard an old, old story How the Savior came from glory How he came to give on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and knew him, and all my love is through him. And he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his fence and power revealing. How he made a lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, yeah, Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, oh, my Savior forever. He sought me and brought me with his redeeming blood. Oh, he loved me and I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the fencing flood. I heard about the mansion he has built for me in glory And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea About the angels singing and an old redemption story And some sweetly I'll sing of there a song of victory hey, Victory in Jesus in my Savior forever He sought me and brought me with His redeeming blood Oh, He loved me and I knew Him and all my love is to Him But He plunged me to victory beneath a cleansing flood I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory And I heard about the streets of gold Beyond the crystal sea About the angels singing An old redemption story And some sweet day I sing a faith A song of victory 
Yes, the victory in Jesus, for my Savior forever. He sought me and brought me with his redeeming love. Oh, he loved me and I knew him, and all my love is you. Victory Yes, a victory in Jesus, oh my Savior forever. He sought me and brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is you. Well, he plunged me to victory. Hallelujah, victory in Jesus, oh my Savior forever. Well, he sought me and brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is to him. Well, he plunged me to victory in the pencil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory in Praise Jesus. The name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for your victory, Lord. The third stand says, I heard about a mansion. He has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. Hallelujah. About the angels singing an old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there a song of victory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We truly have victory this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For those of us who are redeemed by his blood, we really truly have victory. At this time, Brother Adrian and Brother Jimmy will take the morning's tithes and offering. Brother Adrian, okay, one, one of the, um, the ushers and Brother Adrian will take the morning tithes and offering. And you know the order in which we are coming while the song leader continues with worship. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are blessed, we are blessed, we are blessed, we are blessed. Shelter, clothing, and strength. We are blessed. 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 We don't deserve it, but yet we are blessed. We don't deserve it, but yet we are blessed. 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 We are blessed with shelter, clothing, and strength. We are blessed. 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 We don't deserve it, but yet we are blessed. We 
don't deserve it, but yet do we are blessed. 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 We shelter, clothing, and strength. We are blessed. 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 We don't deserve it, but yet we are. Bless. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Father, we give you thanks. One more time, God, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. Hallelujah. We are so blessed. This morning, we give you all the glory and all the praise for your blessings around us. Father God, we thank you for all the blessings this morning. God, we thank you for the rain. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for the rain, God. We thank you for all your special blessings upon us. God, we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise, God. You are worthy of our praises this morning. We lift up your holy name. We thank you, God, for your showers of blessings upon us. Oh, Master God, as we bring this offering into your hands, God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for every hand this morning. We thank you, God, that you will sanctify it. We pray, God, that you will use it for the extension of your kingdom. That, oh, God, we'll come and we'll give to you, as you said, oh, God, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, you will give into our bosom. Continue to bless us today. Have your divine way, we ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise, praise God. Name Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to do this song from the hymnal. Um, I'm glad I counted a cost. Hallelujah. When first I started to seek the Lord, I'm glad I've counted a cost. When first I started to seek the Lord, I'm glad I've counted a cost. I fully measures to Jesus was. I'm glad I've counted a cost. I've paid a price and I've paid a price. He saved my soul that was lost. And now my treasures are in the sky. I'm glad I've counted a cost. I lay a sorrow at Jesus. Jesus feet, I'm glad I've come to the cross. And now a pleasure so pure and sweet, I'm glad I've come to the cross. I've paid a price and I've paid a price. He saved my soul that was lost. And now my treasures are in the sky. Although the trials are hard to bear, God, I've come in a cross. I'm glad I've come in a cross. I've paid a price and I've paid a price. He saved my soul that was lost. And all my treasures are in the sky. I'm glad I've come to the cross. I come on Jesus, my every care. I'm glad I've come to the cross. And all my burden he has to bear. I'm glad I've come to the cross. Oh, I've paid a price and I've paid a price. He saved my soul that was lost. Now my burden with Jesus share. I'm glad I've come to the cross. Yes, I've paid a price and I've paid the price. He saved my soul that was lost. I 
and all my treasures are in the sky. I'm glad I've come to I've paid a price, I've paid a price, and I've paid a price. He saved my soul that was lost. And now my treasures are in the sky. I'm glad I've come to I've paid a price, I've paid a price, and I've paid a price. He saved my soul that was lost. And now my treasures are in the sky. I'm glad I've come to I've paid, I've paid a price, and I've paid a price. He saved my soul that was lost. And now my treasures are in the sky. I'm glad I've come to the God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I've conquered a cross. And someday we're going to see the king. Hallelujah. One day we're going to see the king. We shall see the king. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We shall see the king. Is a blessed time that coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. The wedding of the bride unite with the groom. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. He is coming in power with his blessed hour. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Are you ready? Show the Savior call today. Oh, will Jesus say, Well done, now go away. My home is in heaven, fellow. The world can never stay. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Hey, we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. Who oh, is coming with power? We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call? To crown your Savior, King and Lord of all. Oh, the kingdom of this world shall soon before him fall. And we shall see the king when he comes. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming with power and hold the blessed hour. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. We shall see. Oh, we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming in power and the hill of blessed hour. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we shall see, we shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. Will is coming with power, we hear the blessed hour. Oh, and we shall see the king when he comes. We shall see him, we shall see the king. We shall see the king, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming in power, oh, and hear the blessed hour. Oh, and we shall see the king when he comes. 
Yeah, we shall see him. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming in power. Oh, he's a blessed hour. Oh, and we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we shall see him. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming in power on the hill, the blessed are. Oh, and we shall see the king when he comes. We shall see him. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming with power. Oh, behold the blessed hour. Oh, and we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we shall see him. We shall see the king. Oh, we shall see the king. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming in power. Oh, and so the blessed hour. Oh, and we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we shall see him. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming in power. Oh, and he the blessed hour. Oh, and we shall see the king when he comes. Yes, we shall see him. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. Oh, we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming in power. Oh, and he's the blessed hour. Oh, and we shall see the king when he comes. Oh, we shall see him. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, he's coming. Hallelujah. Glory. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name this morning, God. We praise you, Lord. For Lord, you have enabled us to worship you this morning, God. Thank you for being here with us, Lord. And oh God, we praise your name today. We worship you, Lord. We want to thank the Lord for Praise God. our musicians. Hallelujah. Our technical team. We also would like to thank the Lord for the devotion leader and the team. We praise God for you, our brethren in the house and those who are in distance land. We want to thank you. We would like to welcome those who have just joined us. Just in case you do not know, we are coming to you from the New Testament Church of God in Calder. And today is a very special day for us. Today is the Life Builders Ministry are in the house. We want to welcome all the men who are with us. Brother Coombs, Brother Miller, Brother Bino, Brother Roderick, Brother Vans. Brother Andrew, and, and we heard that Brother Andrew is, is in the spotlight these days. We have to thank God for him. Hallelujah. He is our, our doctor in Calder. Praise God for the men today. And we also have Brother Adrian, Brother Kwame, Pastor Ferdinand, and Bishop Hansby Lewis. God is great. And Brother Jimmy. Don't want to forget Jimmy, Brother Danny, and Brother Delano. They are all men. And they are all, the younger men will be grown up to be older men in times to come. 
Oh, I'm not forgetting Joshua. Where is Joshua? Joshua. Oh, man, Joshua. Couldn't forget Joshua, man. Joshua is in the house, too. Praise the Lord. And I was almost wondering where is Caleb. <laughs> but praise God. Today is the day that the light builders have been given the opportunity to conduct our service. And we want to thank Pastor for that opportunity. We want to thank you, the brethren, for attending today. We just would like to pray for those who have not been able to attend today. And at this time, I want to welcome Pastor as he comes to introduce our speaker for today. Let us welcome him. Show him some love today. Show him some call the love today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, Pastor. Thank you, Minister Bacchus. And we have victory in Jesus. It doesn't matter what circumstances are, but we can trust in the Lord because he has control over every circumstance. So let us claim our victory in Jesus today. On your own you will be defeated, but it is in Jesus Christ that we have the victory. Praise the Lord. Thank you, men, for leading us in those oldie goldies. And it's good to go back and bring out the old ones that we can rejoice in them. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Minister Bacchus has done a good job on highlighting all the men. Well, little Joshua is not an adult, but he is a male. And Bryson is our only baby here. So all the men have been highlighted. And we also have Rico. So all the males, let's put our hands together for all the male. Praise the Lord. I, I must say it's really good to have Mr. Coombs with us again. Mr. Coombs, God bless you. And we are continuing to pray for you and for your family. And we are trusting God to turn things around and do great things in your life. And it's always good to have Brother Vance. Good to have you, Brother Vance. Always with us. Give in to the church, the work of the Lord, and we thank God for him as well. Let us continue to remember him in our prayers. Praise the Lord. And um, today, as you have heard, is Men's Fellowship Day or Life Builders Day. And they have a special guest to share the word of God with us today. He's not a stranger to us here at Kola. As a matter of fact, he's a Kola man. And we are always happy to have him. He's a humble man. He's a man with great integrity. He's faithful and dedicated. And we love him and we appreciate him. And we are happy to welcome him to share the word of God with us. Is none other than our own Bishop Hans B. Lewis. Put your hands together and give him a call. Uh, welcome. God bless you, Bishop. Okay, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Can we just lift our hands as we praise him this morning? Praise the name of the Lord. God is so good, a eh God. I want to take this opportunity to thank God for being here today. To be in Calder for me is really a privilege. It is really an enjoy opportunity as always to be here because for me in the Calder congregation is where it all started. Where it all started. So I want to greet you warmly in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can still see some old faces here when I um, joined the church. 
in Calder, Sister Anne, one of them, and the blacks on the hill there, and I can see some faces still remembering them when they came into the church under my pastor, uh, pastorship. And um, for those of you that have joined the church through the years and are here with us this morning, God bless you for being here. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, as I sat there this morning, uh, my, my thoughts was really running backward when it all started for me. It all started for me when I was about the age of uh, 32 years of age. I was caught up in a lot of stuff in the world. I was working in Kingston then. I had a young family, one son and a daughter. And my life was getting way out of control. Believe you me, it was really getting out of control. I had taken in those days to drinking, and I will tell persons today who are in the drinking habit that I don't think that you ever drink the kind of drink that I eventually drink in my time. It was really getting out of um, control, and I could remember Praise the name of the Lord that there was a particular incident in Argyle, one carnival, and where we went there and think about having a good time, but it all turned out to be a bad time. And then I came back into my house. I was a member of the Methodist Church, confirm and everything in the Methodist Church, but which my parents are Methodists, and was going to the Methodist Church, but going to the Methodist Church, coming back out, it, it it was still the same old you. And then when I had that incident there at Dark Island, came back into my home, not that I did not know God, I hear about him, I read about him, but in a personal relationship, I did not have that. And therefore, I, I, I bow my knees in my home at my bedside, and I, I pray to God, and I say, God, I want you to deliver me from my sins. I want you to come in, and you will make the, the changes in my life. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, from that point in time, I feel a weight lifted from me that I never knew that, that I was carrying that weight upon my shoulders until when that was lifted from me. It was lifted from my body. It was lifted from my mind, my conscience, and everything like that. It was lifted. I told persons that the very first church that I, that I, I, I went out, when, I, when that happened to me, I re realized that my wife they came from staunch adventist family i had two going at the adventist church which did, did not turn out to be to my expectation and then i end up in the calder church in the rogers building right across there for those of you who know where that building used to be and there is where the changes begin to take place in my life it has been a long time brothers and sisters a very a very long journey with god and I stand here this morning, praise the name of the Lord, to let you know that God is still in the saving business. And he can change any individual life. And he can make that life worthwhile, fulfilling to the name and to the glory of God Almighty. Praise the name of the Lord. Not that it was all bed of roses, mind you. There were difficult moments in my life. As a matter of fact, I could remember many times I feel myself, I was losing weight. Finances was, was right down low, walking the street of Kingston, and I would say to God, God, how long, how long is this going to take place? How long is it going to continue? But I want to tell you something. God has a way of doing things. God has a way of working out things. God has a way of bringing you to a situation, praise the name of the Lord, that when you have come out of that situation, that when you look back at that situation, you can only say that it had to be the hand of God. And those are the ex some of the experiences that I have had in my life. In the ministry, I have labored in many churches. As a matter of fact, the longest of them is Mesopotamia Church. I labored here within the pastorate of this church for over 10 years. I've seen 
many changes after I left because there were many pastors that came in. We had uh, Pastor Bratcher, we had Bishop Chesley Ferdinand, we had uh, Pastor Joe Dublin, and we had quite a bit of them. We have our bishop here, Bishop Carson Ferdinand, and all of them had made contributions to this, to this congregation. And I could remember back in my time, and if those of you who were in call the church during my past rate, some of the things that we will pray about is that this congregation, this congregation will remain. That this congregation will be a light in Calder. And thank God through the years it has been. Thank God through the years that the Lord has been faithful to this congregation. Many have come and gone to face the wall out, out there, praise the name of the Lord, as a Christian and still remain to be a Christian in their walk with him. Praise God. I must thank the men's fellowship, the life builders of, of this church uh, under the guidance of Brother Adrian, a very good and personal friend of mine. I've come to love this brother. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to encourage you, Brother Adrian, to continue in the good work that the Lord has called you into. As I look about the congregation this morning, there's quite a bit, quite a, a, a few men. And I want to say, before I get into the word of God, that attach yourself to this unit. To see yourself as a part of this unit. This men's fellowship group. Don't, do not see yourself as being separated. When you talk men's fellowship, you must, you must speak about yourself because you are a part of the men's fellowship. And I want to encourage the younger men who have not yet joined this group to join this group and to be a part of this group. It is one of the departments of the local church, praise the name of the Lord, that is very scanty in our churches. The ladies' ministries is far, fast outnumbering the men, but I want to encourage our men. We are, we, are the, the, we, we are the leaders in our home. We are to be the leaders in the church. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to encourage you to stay with God and to, and to, to let him help you to fight the good fight of faith and to lay hold on eternal life. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want to say thanks to uh, Bishop Ferdinand as well for... Uh, hello? Pastor. Okay, I was saying Bishop. Okay, Pastor Ferdinand. Right, uh, for allowing me this, uh, this privilege, this opportunity at, 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 at this altar to declare to you the words of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You see, as Christians, as Christians, our positions have been changed. There is no them say about it. We have been moved from one position to another position. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. We have been removed from the unrighteousness to righteousness. We have been moved from death to life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our positions have been changed in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are now children of light. And not of the darkness. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I would like to share with us as the Lord will have me from the same portion of scripture that was read this morning. And the Lord did the, direction, the directing in this portion of scripture. And when I look at in Sunday school this morning, what was said in Sunday school, and the songs that were sung this morning by our devotion team, it all coincide with this message. With this message. It was Paul speaking to Timothy, and I would just like to Read those three verses before I get into them. It was a charge that he was putting to young Timothy from verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, 
that they be that they be rich in good works ready to distribute willing to communicate laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay, that they may lay hold on eternal life i would like to share with us on this topic this morning building a sure foundation it is coming from verse 19 of that same portion of the word of god building a sure foundation against the time to come building a sure foundation against the time to come our gracious god the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who did call me by your gospel, and God who did set me free from my sins and from all that chains and bind, and your words declare unto me, O God, whom the Son of God set free, they are free indeed. And so God and Father, today as I stand as your representative, as an oracle of thine, to declare the unsearchable riches of the grace of Jesus Christ. I pray that, Lord, you will just hide me behind the cross. And, oh God, I pray that every word uttered this morning will be to the guidance and the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. That in everything, oh God, today, you alone will be glorified through that which we have to say and do in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Apostle Paul, writing to Timothy, in this portion of Scripture, was given Timothy a charge. But before I get into this portion of Scripture, we may ask the question, who is Timothy? One will say of Han, he was, a, he was um, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and one that worked with Paul. But what do we know more than that about this Timothy? According to the scriptures and according to historians, that is, Bible historians, it is said that Timothy was converted on, on Paul's first missionary into Asia Minor, into the region of Turkey, what we have as Turkey today. But he did not become a follower of, of Paul to understudy Paul until Paul's second missionary journey into the region. Paul went back into the region, conforming the churches. And he came into the region of Derby and Lystra, and there he, he met with Timothy. Now, Timothy was a young man. Timothy's mother was a Jew, his father was a Greek. And right there, you can see, you, you will be able to see there that a, Jew, a, a Jewish mother and a Greek father? How can that be? But the Lord has a way of doing things that we don't understand. And so you would find that Timothy, Timothy through his mother came from a, a, a very religious setting. His mother's name was Eunice and his was Eunice and his grandmother was Louis. And they were Jew. They were Jew in the dispersion when, when the Jews in Israel, because of, of um, persecution, they had to eventually maybe leave their home and settle elsewhere in other, in other lands. And there was young Timothy. And Paul made him an understudy through his missionary journeys. As a matter of fact, Timothy was left in Ephesus to straighten out some matters. But the scripture declared that Timothy, young Timothy, he knew the scriptures from a child. 
from a child, his mother and his grandmother was responsible for teaching him the scriptures. And I believe that when Paul came in contact with this family, Timothy had sufficient knowledge of the scriptures that he surrendered to the gospel of Jesus Christ easily because in the scriptures you will find that the scriptures spoke about the coming of a Messiah. As a matter of fact, the, gospel, the, the writings of Isaiah the prophet was no new writings to a Jew and the Old Testament as a matter of fact. So we have Timothy where Paul was writing to him and we can see in his letters which there are two of them that Paul wrote to him and gave him words that will help him in his pastoral work in Ephesus. And this morning I would like to just use these three verses, praise the name of the Lord, from the, his writings in his first epistle to Timothy. Let me just get to praise the name of the Lord. In verse 19, you will notice that he is saying here, laying up in store for themselves. Now, he intend that, that Timothy will communicate this part to the church as well as others in which he had instructed him before. But I have chosen this particular portion of scripture that will eventually coincide with the topic that I would like to share with you this morning, building a sure foundation. Building a sure foundation. And when we talk about building a sure foundation, whether it is a spiritual foundation or a physical foundation, it takes hard work to build a good foundation. Whether it is physical or spiritual, it takes hard work to build that foundation. I will like to highlight the foundation of the church first of all. The foundation of the church. You will find that the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians in one of Paul's epistle, he declared to the Corinthian church that no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus Christ is the sure foundation of the church. Praise the name of the Lord. No man can ever lay another foundation of the church because the foundation of the church has already been laid. Praise the name of the Lord. We have the apostles, the prophets, and Jesus Christ, the, the chief cornerstone in the foundation of the church. So we have the writings of the prophets, we have the writings of the apostles, and we have the, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded in the gospel. The foundation of the church standard, standard show. And it is upon this foundation that we are called to build upon. We as lively or living stones are built upon this foundation, says the Apostle Paul. Every child of God is built upon this, this foundation. But Paul is looking away a bit from this foundation because each individual had to set a foundation for themselves. You would agree with the scripture this morning that each individual 
has to do something, praise the name of the Lord, to build himself up. Through spiritual growth and development so that he can be established. And Jesus says in, I think it is Matthew's gospel. He that heareth these sayings of mine and dweth them, I will lighten him unto a man. Praise the name of the Lord. That build his house upon a rock. So that when the winds and the waves and the floods descend, that foundation is going to be a sure foundation. There's so many things in our world today. So many different types of preaching and so many different types of things that we're hearing from, from a lot of religious organization. And sometimes when we look into them, they do not have a scriptural base and therefore we cannot accept those things that we are hearing from those other religious organizations. The foundation standeth sure. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord knoweth them that are his because they are built upon this foundation. And I want to tell you brothers and sisters in Christ this morning that when you are established upon this foundation, praise the name of the Lord, you are not that easily shaken. Praise the Lord. I have come a long way in my spiritual life. A long way, a mighty way. And I can assure you this morning that, that I am standing firm upon this foundation. Firm upon this foundation. Four square upon the foundation that Jesus Christ has built, has left us the foundation praise the name of the lord thank you jesus you see the believer has a responsibility and that responsibility that you and i have praise the name of the lord is to take the word of god seriously i think i, I think at times that we are slighting the word of god but the scripture teaches us that the word of god is sharp it is powerful, man. Sharper than any twedged sword. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of God is what we have to build upon in our lives as a believer. So that our foundations, when the enemy lashed out. When sickness step in, when the storms of life rage around us, our foundation is going to remain. Because it is sure, it is steadfast. It is a foundation that is unmovable. Praise the name of the Lord. And it is upon this foundation that we are called to build our lives on. How much of the word of God at times that we study? It is the same Paul that, uh, that said to, to, to Timothy, study to show yourself, yourselves approved. But how, how much, many of us will take the word of God and study them? Not many of us, you know. Not many. Some of us will. And some of us have dedicated ourselves to the studying of God's word. And you will find that those of us that study God's word, that make it a practice in our daily life, in our daily living, praise the name of the Lord, the word of God is ever present with us. It does not come by the flicking of a finger, you know. You have to spend time, valued time. Sometimes, in the night, when the Spirit of Almighty God walking upon you, walking upon your heart and bringing things to you, you have to spend value time. Sometimes you have to sacrifice sleep because of this word. Spiritual growth and development is not a flick of the finger. 
Sometimes we think it happened all automatically. But sacrifice, Jesus sacrificed his life for us and therefore we got to sacrifice our time as well. And this is a word of encouragement to the men's fellowship group. You got to sacrifice valued time if you want to see your group take off. You got to spend time with God. Praise the name of the Lord. This, this half a minute in prayer, this half a minute just turning leaves, and sometimes when you turn, turn the leaves of your Bible and you begin to read, I'm talking from, from experience, brothers and sisters in Christ, there were times in my life, even as a pastor of a church, that sometimes you take up this Bible here and you turn, turn the pages and you will read, not that you does not know the word, you does not know how to call the word, but when you look at the word, something is not clicking and you know something is wrong. Something is wrong. And therefore you got to get done and there, there's, there's sometimes, a, sometimes, I would say a spell that Satan casts at times that got to be broken. Got to be broken. Do you remember Isaiah and Uzziah? I wonder how many of us read that, that portion of scripture with the understanding. Here was young Uzziah, a prophet. Well, as a matter of fact, he was not really called, called as yet by God. But here he was in the court, court of, um, of Uzziah. It is said that this young prophet could have been a relative of the king. And it is also said that no king after Solomon enjoyed the, the, the prosperity and the blessings of God as Uzziah. And here was the young, young Uzziah in his courts. But he did not see the Lord until King Uzziah died. You see, sometimes the Lord has to step in and has to, to really do something for us to really come to our senses. And for us to seek him the way that he ought to be sought. And so it is, it is, it is said that in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God can do great things in our life. Great things in our life. But we have to God to make the sacrifice, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to say this morning that Jesus Christ is the chief architect in the plan of our salvation, in the plan of the development of our spiritual life. The Holy Spirit is the chief executive officer that carries out the work of God the Father and Jesus Christ. He's in our world today. The chief executive officer of the Godhead is in our world today. And he brings glory only to God. His work is to glorify Jesus Christ. And you will agree with me when I say this this morning that the, the working of the Holy Spirit in our life is to glorify God. Hallelujah. Jesus said when he the Holy Spirit is come, he will guide us into all truth. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is necessary for us today so that we can be guided through the scriptures. Praise the name of the Lord. He will guide us into his truths. I would like to come to where the patriarch Abraham the patriarch Abraham, it is said that they look for a city that has foundation, whose maker and builder is God. When they came into Canaan, they had the promises. They were looking for a city, 
And because of the fact that the type of city that they were looking for, they could not have found it. They realized that the maker of such city had to be God. The maker of such city had to be God. No wonder Jesus in St. John's Gospel declared to the disciples, I go to prepare a place for you and I will come again. Speaking to the church, speaking to the disciples. I will come again and I, I will receive you unto myself. That, there, that where I am, there you may be also. I want to say that when you look at the book of Revelation, the, Re the book of Revelation, John saw this city. The new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. And the scripture in the book of Revelation teaches that that city has 12 foundations in that city. What a city. It is the place where God wants the blessed that is redeemed from earth to be. And God has Seen to it, praise the name of the Lord, that a city is prepared for those that love him. My brothers and sisters, this morning it is going to be a wonderful thing after this life, you know. We hear about it, but it is going to be a reality one of these days. A reality, heaven is going to be real just as we are all real here this morning. It is going to be a real place. And sometimes some persons think that, how can I believe that? I have not seen it. But you see, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It is going to be a real place. Heaven is going to be a real place. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So every child of God through the ages being saved of art, washed in the blood of the Lamb will be a part of the new heaven and the new earth. This city will become a reality. You know some time ago I eventually in the book of um, Revelation I began to look at the dimensions of the city and I was... I, I tell you, my head raised, I, bishop or, or pastor, I, I pace in my home when I, when I think about what God is giving us to understand in his words. When I look at the dimension of this city, I wonder how many of us have really looked into it, the dimension of this city. I heard a preacher just yesterday was speaking about it, um, Bishop Sonny, Sonny Williams at Glad Tidings Tabernacle. And I, as I sat there, he was hitting on, the, on, the, on some very strings that I eventually had in my, in, in, in my life when I read this portion of scripture. The length of this city is the same as the width of the city. And the height of the city is the same as the width and the breadth of the city. And can you just imagine that it is going to be a city? That the dimension of the city is 1,400 miles in length, 1,400 miles in width, and 1,400 miles in height. It will make the Tower of Babel that Nimrod then was building very, very stupid. And when I listened to that message yesterday, my, my mind was so taken up with what was really being said and what coincided back with the word of God. And I, I just bowed my head there and I said, Lord, what a place. What a place. That city is going to have somewhere around 600 flows in it, in the air. 600 floors in it. It is going to be a city that is going to be bigger than the whole of India. 
It is going to be bigger than the United Kingdom. It is going to be bigger than Eastern Europe. And that is why you will find that in the new creation of God, there is not going to be any sea. There is going to be more land space. There is not going to be any sea in this new creation. What am I saying this morning? I'm saying this morning that God loves us with an everlasting love and God wants us to be where he is. And now is our time, now is our opportunity. Those of us that may be slackening our riding, it is no time to slacken our riding. Let us get in line, get in tuned with God. Those of us that stand aside and have not yet made decisions to follow God, I will say, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? The foundation is laid. God is expecting you as a lively stone to be built on this foundation so that you can be established in him. Through his word, through his spirit, through his grace. For you to fight the good fight of faith. Brothers and sisters, if anything is going to be accomplished, if anything is going to be done in our lives, it had to be done by faith. We had to believe God. And we had to believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. All the patriots of all, all the men of God, they overcome by their faith in God. Jesus said, if you as an individual have, have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can command mountains in your, in, in your life. Do you know that when situations arise, with your faith in God, you can talk to those situations. You can talk to, the, to difficult moments in your life because God gives you that, that power and that authority to speak to the problems and the situation in your life. For you to be an overcomer, God does not want you to be an undertaker. You want, he wants you to be an overcomer Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And our strength from God does not lie within this physical body of ours with, our, with, with, with ripping muscles. No, sir. The power that comes from God, it is a unique power. It is a power, praise the name of the Lord, to destroy the works of the adversary. Sickness, disease, you just name it, that power is presented with us. It is presented with the church to destroy the works of the adversary. And you can rise triumphantly in every given situation in your life. No matter what it is. Financial difficulties, health problems. You just name the difficulty. You can be an overcomer. An overcomer. You see, all that is in the world, as far as this world is concerned, it's wealth. How many of us realize that it belongs to God? Every bit of it belongs to God, you know. And if it belongs to God, it belongs to your father. And he can give it. He can give to you. He can bless you. So that you can recognize him. In your life. But you have got. To have a made up mind. To be steadfast. In him. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is what he want. That, he, that is what he is expecting. Of us. You see, our heart is his throne. He reigns from there. He communicates from there. He wants us to listen. He wants us to pay attention. 
he still speak in a still small voice as he did to Elijah when Elijah was running from Jezebel. And I just want to take you there this morning. Here was Elijah, prophet of God, just see, I saw a grand showdown on Mount Carmel where the prophets of Baal were destroyed. And God did wrought a very great victory that day over the prophets of Baal. But here was Elijah being threatened now by Jezebel. I will make your life like one of my prophets. And he began to run. Can you just imagine it? Just think about it. A man of God with great enthusiasm and great power and strength in God, which he called fire from heaven to consume the sacrifice. And it was a grand time for Israel that day. The people's heart was withdrawn back to God. But here was Elijah now, life being threatened. And he began to run. Are you running away from circumstances in your life today? God does not want you to do that. He wants you to stand firm as a soldier of Jesus Christ and to fight the good fight of faith. Elijah, what are you doing here under this juniper tree? The angel asked, fearful for my life. They have torn down the altars. They have destroyed the prophets and I only am left. The angel give him bread, give him water. And he said, Elijah, the, the task is great. Journey is a, is, is a long one. After the angel spoke to him, Elijah decided that he's going to go back to Mount Horeb, where it all started for Moses. Can you just imagine that a man of God who saw fire come down from heaven, consume sacrifice, and where a great victory was wrought, he now decided that he is going to go on a 40 days journey back to Mount Horeb. Back to Mount Horeb, where Moses come face to face with God. He wanted to be on that mountain and to hear the voice of God. How many of us this morning, maybe running away from the circumstances of our life. Getting away from it all. And thinking that that's the best way to do it. I want to encourage you today not to. It is time to go back to Mount Horeb. It is time to get back to the place where for Moses it started, but for you. It may, may not be Mount Horeb. It may be some place in your life that God wants you to be. Where you can hear his voice more audibly. Where you can listen to him. Another time. And as Elijah get back to that mountain, there was a, a storm ripping that mountain and Elijah thought to himself, yes, after the storm, God is going to communicate. But God did not. There was a fire again on that mountain and Elijah thought that after the fire. You see, these are just symbols of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, this morning. And as the fire passed, praise the name of the Lord, I think there was an earthquake. And then afterward, there was a still small voice. I think sometimes we are ignoring that still small voice that sometimes speak to us. That is lead that should lead us and guide us. Sometimes we ignore it. But God wants us to listen to that still small voice. Praise the name of the Lord. Elijah 
listened to that voice, giving him direction, what to do from that point onward. Can you listen to the voice of God? Maybe in the stillness of the night, maybe in the hustle and bustle of the day when you are by yourself. Can you listen to the voice of God? Can you just shut yourself away from what is going on around you? Can you just eventually, just by yourself, between you and your God, can you listen to that voice that communicates to you? And I tell you this morning, that in so doing, God will be able to renew and to revive and to restore and to, so that you can come out from out of his presence, praise the name of the Lord, with the strength and with the vitality of a soldier, of a warrior, praise the name of the Lord, to battle and to, and, and to do exploits for God. Elijah came away from Mount Horeb. Praise the name of the Lord. And one of his tasks was to anoint Elisha to be prophet, to anoint Hazel to be king of Syria. Praise the name of the Lord. And God set the agenda what Elijah must do from then on before he called him home. I encourage us this morning to listen to that voice. Sometimes we may be looking for a, a big audible voice from the heavenlies. It is not going to happen. God still speaks to us in that still small voice. His communication is sure. He wants to get our attention. So let us listen to him today. Pay attention to what he is really saying because he wanted to take you to another level, to another height, to another deepness, making you standing fast and firm on this foundation that is himself. I pray this morning that you will seek to do that. Listen to him. Listen to him. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we bow our heads today? Father, I thank you today I thank you for the inspiration. I thank you, Lord, that you are God. Besides you, there is none else. And you still communicate with us, O oh God. You're still willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. O oh God, this morning I pray for my brother, for my sister, every visiting friend that are amongst us today, those that are going through trying times of one sort or the other, financial difficulties, health problems. And oh God, we can, the list goes on, my God. But God, we do know that you are able to deliver. And you will deliver. And your deliverance, oh God, hallelujah, is not like man's deliverance. Because God, your deliverance is, is of a higher nature, is of a higher caliber. And when you have delivered, when you have loosed the chains and the bonds and you have set the captive free, oh God, they are really free indeed. So God, free us in the spirit of our minds. Free us up today, God, so that we can listen to that still, small voice that speak to our hearts, that speak to our soul, to our very spirit. And I pray today that we will be submissive that we will be yielded, that we will be surrendered to your Lordship today, and that your anointing will continue to flow from your throne of grace today, that God, that anointing will cause us, oh God, to rise to that place where you want us and would have us to be. 
So saturate our lives today with yourself. Bless us individually and collectively through Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Bishop Lewis. I don't know about you, but God has spoken to somebody today. And if God is calling you today to come to Christ, you ought to obey and come to Christ. I would like to invite anyone who would like to make Jesus your personal Savior this morning. If there's anyone who would like to make Jesus your personal Savior, you can come today. It's not too late. And like I always say, if you should walk out of here knowing that God is calling you to himself, for as he said in John chapter 14, that where I am, there he may be also. If you walk out of here disobeying the Spirit, then you might very well be sorry. Is there anyone? Okay, thank you very much for being so attentive this morning. I know the Lord will have his way in our lives. I know the Holy Spirit is able to quicken any soul today. At this time, I'll invite Pastor to come. Praise God. Thank you. Today, we have received the word of the Lord to build upon a show sure foundation. And the only show sure foundation is Jesus Christ. Many times we are building on other foundations. Some people build on money, finances. Some people build on possessions. Some people build on a boyfriend or on a girlfriend. Some people build on education. Some people build on alcohol and drugs. But all these other foundations fail. We cannot build our lives on these things. Because it is like building a man, building a house on sand. And when the rain comes, it takes it away. So we need to build our lives on the show foundation, Jesus Christ. And many times as Christians, we start to build on the show foundation. And somewhere along the line, we stop building. So we have a half-finished building on the show foundation. But we must continue to build on that foundation. And I want to encourage us this morning to build our lives on the show foundation. Because all other foundation would be washed away in the storms of life. This is good advice. This is good preaching. This is a good word today. Is there someone who would start to build on Jesus Christ? Maybe all your years you have been building on the wrong things. And what you have reaped is troubling your life. Troubling your life. But if you build on Christ, it is the sure foundation. It is the sure way to go. Is there one person today who would surrender all to Jesus 
Let us sing that chorus. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender. Let us stand as we sing. And the invitation is still open. Is there somebody who would surrender all to Jesus? Give it up today. Walk out on the devil today. And give Jesus a chance to fix it. To Jesus, I surrender all to, to Him. I freely give worldly pleasures all forsaken, dignity, present. Surrender. I surrender all. I surrender all to Jesus today. Don't hold anything back. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Is there one person who would say yes to Jesus today? All to Jesus I surrender Humbly at His feet I bow Worldly pleasures Worldly pleasures All forsake Have your seats. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop Lewis, for taking time out to come and share with us this word today. May the Lord bless you and your family, and may He continue to use you in His service. Thank Brother Haynes and the men's ministry for taking to the service and for their service to the Lord and to the church. And may God continue to bless you and to extend your borders. And Bishop Lewis gave a, a, an experience word, a word from experience to the younger men to become a part of the men's group. I don't think there is any need to join because they are already men of the church. So it's just a matter of becoming active and becoming involved as we continue in the work of the Lord, destroying the force of darkness and shining the light of Jesus Christ. That is what it is all about. So I trust that the men would take this word of experience, this word from God today. Praise the Lord. 